Crumble Flam, Part 12, Surf to Turf. Your Majesties, the Bumble Crook Bombers have all been put up in their quarters. The very best rooms in the castle. The, uh, the best? Barring your own, sire, Her Majesties, and my humble apartments, of course. It's quickly quite right. I'm not giving up my bed to that mammoth of a man. I've already had to relinquish my own wife's affections to him. Don't be silly, Vivian. I love you, and only you. I just respect Sir Raven and his huge biceps. Mm, yes, well, I may not have his strength, but I'm prettier than he is anyway. <laughs> uh, verily, sire, prettier by many a rural road. Why, I would go as far as to say that you are the best-looking man in the history of Crumbleflam. Uh, don't, don't, don't uh, crawl like that, Crabtight. Mm? It's, it's a little embarrassing for you. Mm? As you say, sire. Uh, mind you, they all looked to size, didn't they? Those, uh, those uh, uh, bumblebee bingos. Mm? Very hefty chaps to a man. Yes. They did put our team in the shade, rather. Literally. Cast a great shadow over a lot of them. Crabtight, you're sure you sent all the knights away? Why, yes, your majesty. As I said, after they had so dishonoured you both by completely refusing to play the noble game of Rock Tuck and represent Crumbleflan, I thought a fitting punishment would be to send them away on an entirely erroneous mission. Mm. I'm just wondering if that move might have been a little rash. Majesty? Only we might have been able to convince at least some of them to join the team. I doubt you could have, Majesty. They were most emphatic. Still, we might have tried. Well, it's all academic now, ain't it? With the greatest, greatest respect, Majesty. Yeah, I feel terribly let down by them, I must say. I mean, they are my knights. The knights of the picnic bench, after all. I never did understand. Why a picnic bench? Well, don't you know Crumble Flan's history? <laughs> uh, when my great 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 grandfather, Urethra the Uncommonly Wise, built Crumble Flan, it was to be the, the epicenter of great learning, a temple to just law, and home to the bravest of heroes. A nice idea while it lasted. Yeah, U Urethra gathered the finest of knights from across all the known lands, and, and he said that they would meet and make council at the picnic bench. For outside, under the same sky, uh, we are all equal. <laughs> right. Uh, plus, I, I think he just liked eating cold cuts out in the sun, you know. Indeed. Well, I'm so glad I asked. Or whatever their history, the knights aren't here, alas. So we will have to make do with our existing team. They are going to get utterly creamed, though, Crabtight. You're probably right. Great shame, but that's the way the flan crumbles, as we say. Everything seems to be hugely in favour of the opposing team. And I can't put my finger on what's at the bottom of it. Just bad luck, I'd say. Well, who cares anyway? It's just a game, isn't it? Just a game? National reputations are built on these games, Vivian. If we get crushed in the first match of the season, Crumbleflan will be known throughout Christendom as incompetent, weak buffoons. Crumble, crumble flan, as in all of us, as in including me, hmm? a, a buffoon? Yes. Well, we, 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 something simply must be done, and that right quickly. Yes. If only Sid were here, he'd know what to do. Yes, it's a shame he's in, um, he's in, uh, no, 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 don't, 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 don't tell me, no, 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 it's, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's um, no, uh, Nor uh, Norfolk. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, yes, yes, it's on the tip of um, 
It's on the tip of um, it's on the tip of Europe. Oh, come Normandy, on. all the way to Normandy. And for what? What's that, you scurvy maggot of a landlubber? Are you always so insulting? Or is it only with people you've just met? It'd just be my way, you understand. No offence meant, lad, but I'd be a seafaring man with seafaring ways. Yeah, well, I ain't, let me tell you. My guts are doing a Morris dance here, and I am not in the mood to be called names, however quaint a custom it may be. Not got your sea legs yet, then. I don't know about me legs, but I think I left my stomach on shore back at Calais. Taint for everyone this sea life, to be sure. What took you to Normandy if it weren't for the love of travel, then, bucko? What do you want to know for, Captain... Uh, what was it? Culverin's the name, captain of this here vessel. The model. Ain't she a beauty? If by a beauty you mean a full of holes, yes. Don't you ever be speaking ill of my model. I'll have your keel hauled and flay your backside for boot leather. Do you hear me, boy? Blimey. What be your name, old green at the gills? Sid, mate. Sid the Surf. So, Sid, what be your story? Why, for was you sent to foreign parts, for me to find you begging for a passage back to your homeland, the once fair crumble flag, with naught but a few coins in your hand, and your bum all but hanging out the back of your roads? It's a bit complicated. Him all the time in the seven seas, boy o. Right, well, uh, there's this guy I work with back home. Name's Crab Tight. Sounds like a wretched cold. He's all right, really. But he can be a tricky beggar, that's for sure. Anyway, we was working together, and all of a sudden he turns to me and he says, Sid, he says, you know something? You're wasted here, you are. A man of your talent should be utilising all the many abilities God graced you with to the very fullest of your potentialities. A verbose lover, I mean. Yeah. And he uses a lot of long words and all. So, anyway. He says he knows of this place in Normandy. They need some expert on pig farming. So, he says he'll arrange me passage to this place, Assetet. And he says, when I get there, I'm to find a Monsieur inexistent. A wild goose chase, to be sure. Oh no, I found him. Took me weeks, but I found him. Well, blow the man down. Only he's never heard of me, Crumbleflan, or Lord Crabtite. Doesn't need teaching by no expert, he says. Tells me to get lost. Knows all he needs to know about lay cushions, apparently. Though he doesn't seem to know that they're actually called pigs. Sends me on my way, kicks me out on my fundament without so much as a a vot ashore. So this crab tight cove sent you on an entirely erroneous mission, t'would see. Yeah, not a clue why. I thought we was mates. Practical joke, perhaps. A prank among pals, to be sure. Well, it's gone a bit past funny for me, let me tell you. I'm tired, I'm sick as a dog, and I want to get home. Things can't get much worse. That'd be what these seafarers call the luck of a Jonah. You might want to tie yourself to something. Grundleburn. Ah, your majesty. I was just felching the fox. How can I help you? You were watching the what? One of my stretches. Majesty... It takes some doing, but one tries to uh, get one's head through one's uh, knees. Anyway, you get the idea. Goodness. Yes, right. I was wondering if you could help me with something. If I can, I shall, Majesty. Firstly... Could you put some clothes on, please? Of course. Good. You know you can summon the spirits of the dead via that magic eye of yours? Yes, Majesty. It is rare and strong magic, but I have mastered it. I was wondering if it can be done with the living. Well, this is much more difficult. I could seek a living person with my magic eye so that we could see them... 
but to actually conjure them from another place to this. Well, I'm not sure if it's ever been done. Could you try? It is most dangerous, this thing that you ask, Majesty. It would mean dabbling with forces far beyond even my own understanding. It would require me to reach right into the uttermost depths of the unknown, to push my consciousness through into a world outside our own comprehension, travel into the land of spirits, demons and beasts beyond imagining, to ask the very gods themselves to grant me access to untold powers. Yes, but could you? I'll need a few things. Ah, me. This is the life, eh? Craptite, my old son. <laughs> Nothing better after a long day than to go over the accounts one last time to make sure they are well and truly fixed, and then to admire one's own hat collection. Good heavens, I haven't worn this one in ages. Mind you, it did keep getting caught in the rafters of the banqueting hall. Oh, yes, this is the life. Finally, everything is going my way. About a ruddy time, too. I mean, I work my fingers to the bone in this place, toiling every hour God sends to keep this place running like a well-oiled concubine. And never a word of thanks. What reward, we ask, does poor old Crabtite receive for his labours? A whole heap of nothing. Shut up, Kevin. What do you know about it anyway? But now, things are moving along very nicely indeed. All my plans are running smoothly without a hiccup. And most wonderfully of all, that interfering dung delver Sid is well out of the way. <laughs> Sending him abroad was the smartest thing I've ever done. Good riddance to that stinking oaf. Well rid, my old son. Well rid. Right and down the hatches, you scurvy dog. A fast behind. You leave my behind out of it, mate. Oh, oh, I'm gonna lose me lunch at this rate. Lower the mainsail. Avoid me no more use than Mars snickers flapping in a fart. If I get out of this alive, I'll die happy. I Neptune be a feisty fella tonight. Well, if he's wanting company down in the depths, he's come calling at the wrong vessel and no mistake. Oh, bleeding it. Fret not, me laddo. I've weathered worse storms than this. You're off your nuts, you are. Aye. The last storm I was in was so bad, it snapped the mast. Took me buttocks clean off, it did. Maybe wooden cheeks I sits on now. Get me out of here. Ah, your majesties. All is prepared. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make it known that I am dead against all this black art stuff, Aldith Grundleburn, and I am only here because Ermintrude threatened to tread on my toes if I, if I didn't come. Your reservations have been noted, sire. Right, good. Just as long as they have. Let's get on with it. Yes. The sooner we can get Sid back, the sooner we can start making sense of what's going on around here. Very well. Uh, firstly, I will need something of Sid's to begin the spell. Did you bring something that belongs to him? We brought one of his pigs. <laughs> right. He's a, a spirited swine, he is too. Very nearly bruised my knee, he did. Be quiet, Vivian. Oh, uh, quite right. If you could place the pig in this bowl of water, Majesty. All of it? Uh, just stand one of his trotters in, that should do. Right, oh. Now, I will need complete silence and utter concentration from you both. Hear that, Vivian? Mm, yeah, say again. Concentrate. Oh, oh yes, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Mm. Ingi bingi tabi flam. Nictus fictus gulus mal. Forum torum brevity mint. Istus listus witching bin. Ah. Where is he, Aldith? I'm. 
I'm not sure. Well, he's not here, at any rate. No. Oh, poot. <laughs> right. Bedtime, I think. Good night, Kevin. Try to keep the cooing down to a minimum tonight, will you? Lest you find your beak ground to grist under the marble rolling pin of the castle cook. Having the Chamberlain align every individual goose feather in this mattress has made the world of difference. Oh, bliss. Blimus! Man I'm under board. attack! Man alive, folks, already! Man overboard! Get out of my bed! Man overboard! Intruder! Wait, what in the name of all that's poor sign? Sid? What the hell are you doing in my bed, you great soppy wet idiot? I... I don't know. But since I've got your attention, I have a few questions to ask you, me old China. That was Crumble Flan, with Callum Hale as King Vivian the Vague, Philippa James as Queen Ermintrude the Organised, David Boyle as Lord Crabtite the Cunning, Jacqueline Johnson as Grundlebound the Great, Roger Parkins as Sid the Surf, and Ivan Wilkinson as Captain Culverin. <laughs>